Welcome everyone to another one of our Facebook Lives on Tuesdays. This has been an incredible start to a really great year, 2022. And thanks to all of you who signed up for our So Confident program. We are so grateful to you and it's just been an overwhelming success. And with that, of course, has come <clears throat> some issues with our kit selection. Um, I have to admit that I based my kit quantities on the best kit ordering month of 2021, and then I doubled that order. And of course, we have run out of a couple of colors. In fact, I think we've run out of all the colors now. Uh, and what was interesting is that navy was a very popular color with uh, so many of you. And that caught me a little bit off guard. Uh, but those of you who are awaiting kit information, you're going to get some wonderful choices tomorrow on Wednesday. You're going to get a nice email from Betsy with lots of choices for various colors, and I'm really happy with the selection. It took me longer to put that together than I had hoped. We were waiting literally on a FedEx package from Canada that was to have been here over a week ago, and it just didn't arrive until yesterday. So I don't know, you know, snow and trucks and all kinds of issues and we finally got the samples and so those samples and then of course I had to verify that the chain reaction to the other selections that go with it was going to work. So that's been the delay and I'm really sorry about that. But we are catching up and we're giving you the options and we're ready to uh, help you out with your kits to start off this great year of So Confident. So... <clears throat> I am getting questions on some fit issues with the sterling jacket. And if you uh, have some fitting issues, some of that can be taken care of in our Q&A session that's coming up. Uh, you're welcome to email me now. I may or may not be able to get back to you quickly. It depends on the uh, sort of depth of the questions. And I'm considering some one-on-one -on -one private consultations again for those of you who are, might be interested in that. So I'm going to be talking to Alex about that to see if we can set up some times to maybe uh, deal with some fitting issues just generally or whatever you want to talk about. So we did that last year. It was very successful, and I think we'll probably do that again. So that catches us up for the start of the year. And today we're going to talk about a total ensemble that I am really in love with and always have been, the Helix Top and Pants. Now I'm also going to talk about the pencil pants because they're very similar and I'm going to give you the, the differences in the two pants. But let's start with the top. I have on the whole ensemble today, I have on the Helix top and the Helix pants. And, you know, we all wear knits and we all wear t-shirts and I don't know about you, but I can, I can sew a t-shirt now kind of in the, uh, in the dark <laughs> pretty quickly, but this Helix t-shirt is really interesting because it is a spiral. So I'm going to show you the pattern piece to give you an idea of what we're talking about here and why this is so unique and so much fun to sew. So this is one of the two pieces, actually there's three pieces, because there's a neck band, but can, you can see that the shape of this pattern is very different. And I'm holding it up as if it were going on my body with that line going up and down. That's the center front of this pattern. So my right hand side over here is on the sleeve portion of the pattern, and this portion of the pattern would go around and meet another seam that is also on the diagonal. And this is really fun to sew. So you have to uh, look at our guide sheet. You can't just, well, maybe you can, but I think it helps if you just follow the guide sheet and trust that the directions are correct and you just, once you start, then it's easy. It's that very first seam of which one, which edge goes with which edge that can be a little bit challenging and a little confusing. You just have to match it up, match the notches and all that and it, and it works out great. So this is a spiral, and so I have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a seam here that wraps around, it comes down here, and the back is the same way. So it's, the whole thing is just kind of twisted. And I have done two things to this particular pattern. I have lengthened it, and I have added a cowl, because normally it's just a narrow, traditional, ready-to-wear binding. 
So I thought I would show you how to lengthen this very odd pattern. So I'm not going to show the big pattern, so I tried to draw a little miniature rendition of the pattern just to give you the idea. So you remember I mentioned that vertical line that's the center front, and the right-hand side is the sleeve, and this is the body. We do have a lengthen and shorten line on this pattern that is where it should be, but you notice that the straight of grain is like this. It's not parallel with the center front. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to extend that straight of grain line through the bottom portion of the pattern because it's not there. It stops just short of the lengthen and shorten line. And then you figure out how much you want to lengthen the pattern. And I have lengthened this pattern. Let me look here. I think it's three, it's four inches. I lengthen the pattern four inches to make it tunic length. So this is the cut line of the straight of gray, um, the lengthen and shorten line. So I cut along that line, I spread the pattern, and I spread it an equal distance all the way across. So I spread this pattern on the full size pattern four inches straight across. Now. That's when this extended straight of grain line comes in really handy. You're going to extend this line into the section of fabric that you've inserted, your four inches of extra tissue, and you extend that line and keep going, and then that is the line that matches up. So this straight of grain line is completely connected and goes through all the pieces. Now when you do that, <clears throat> then of course things don't line up on the sides anymore. So on the full size piece, you're going to want to have something like a large straight edge of some sort so that you can reconnect some lines. You want to use the original width line, the corner here, and you want to lay that ruler down so that you're going to make another straight line, which is what it started out to be. That was the original shape of the line. And then you're going to use the original width line at the bottom here. and if that has a slight curve to it, you can use a hip curve or some sort of uh, ruler to reconnect that. You could probably even use a straight edge here as well on the full piece. But you're keeping the same width at the bottom of the, the same circumference at the bottom of the garment. But this is the key thing right here, lining up that straight of grain. And yes, that'll shift, but that'll make everything fall into line just perfectly. So, now... To make the cowl, the pattern piece for the original neck binding is simply a long rectangle. But I decided that I wanted to have a cowl that's about six inches tall. So if you calculate that, it's six inches that goes up, six inches that comes back down, and then I need two seam allowances, five eighths and five eighths, so that's another inch and a quarter. So I cut a rectangle the width of the size that I was sewing by 13 and a quarter inches tall. So you simply use this piece and make it taller. Super, super easy. So you don't have to recalculate circumferences of necklines. You don't have to think about uh, seven eighths and all those magic numbers that we are always throwing out there about ready to wear bindings. That's already been calculated in this width or length, so you're now thinking about height. It can be as short or as tall as you want. <clears throat> and I think it depends on the fabric as well as to how tall you want it. This fabric has some support to it, so it stands up pretty good. Some are, fabrics are very drapey, and you could even go taller, and you get quite a nice fold with the neckline. So think about your fabric and how much you want to add to the height of the neck binding. All right, so that is the top. Now, the other thing that I did to this top is that I wanted to f feature the seam lines. And so I, even though I made it in one fabric, and by the way, we have a number of samples where we've done a couple, well, I have one. I forgot I have one. Oops. It's tonal, but you can see that I've used two colors, uh, a, a very off-white and then more of a cream. 
So that this shows you how this pattern, one sleeve is one color and comes around and comes up here. And then the other sleeve is a different color and it comes around and swirls to the front. Did the same cowl. This one might be a little longer. I think it might be. Uh, doesn't matter. You can make it any length you want. You can make it dress, dress length, actually. So, um, but at any rate, I wanted to, on this one, uh, identify and feature the seam lines because I thought they were interesting. So I did some hand sewing, uh, four strands of embroidery floss in a contrasting green thread color, and I just simply did a running stitch on both sides of the well of the seam to feature those seams. And then on this one, I just did some diagonal stitching, running stitch. You know, when you're, it's funny, I was really um, tired last night for some reason, and I, but I wasn't ready to give it up for the day. So I sat down and stitched just a couple of lines of stitching, and it relaxed me, and it helped me forget what was going on with the rest of my life that day, and I was rejuvenated to some extent. <clears throat> so I think a little bit of hand stitching for me is a very relaxing thing to do. So that's the lengthening of the helix top and the um, cowl neck. All right, so let's talk about the pants a little bit. The helix pants, Aaron and I were just talking about this before we came on the air, so to speak. Um, the helix pants are, I think, one of our favorite pants for a slim pant. You know, it's, it's the profile that really works with so many things that are oversized on the top, and then those helix pants are just not perfect for the leg width. So here we have a pair of printed Ponte Helix pants. You can see they're quite slim, but not skinny, skinny like tights or leggings. Just, they're just like perfect. And you want to wear these right at the ankle. I don't think you want to wear them too long. You can wear them short. I have shorter pairs uh, for the summer. In fact, we have two lengths in the pattern Actually, uh, uh, what do you call the, the short length? Um, there's a word for it. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's um, I think cropped, cropped, cropped and not cropped. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, but they do work cropped as well. Uh, probably would make great biker shorts, by the way. Anyway, um, so ankle length, and then it has a hidden waistband. I'm going to pull out these red ones so you can see this a little bit. It has an exposed elastic, but the elastic is zigzag stitched to the right side of the pants, zigzag stitch right here, and then that is turned in so it's completely hidden, and then it's stitched in the ditch in various places through the darts and the seams so that it's hidden. So you get some stretch, this is one and a half inch knit elastic. So you get enough stretch to get them on. They're very comfortable. And this is a, an elastic that's real soft. So it's next to your skin and it feels pretty good. And I'm the queen of things not feeling good against my skin. So if I can wear these, anybody can, I think. So that's the waistband and some of the details of the Helix. You can see you have some fitting darts here, front, and back. We have, that's, the uh, Helix pant is a print pattern and it has the pants and the top. The pencil pants are, are a down low digital pattern, pants only. Very similar in leg shape and width. We've had this debate and we need to get a ruler to it to tell you the truth, but we haven't done that for a while. But we, we think they're pretty similar in leg width little different shape to the crotch seam, but a totally different waistband treatment. So this is actually a casing that is a little bit like what I'll call a yoke. So this fabric is on the face of the pants and on the back side of the pants. There's elastic inside of this casing, but the casing is an inch and a half wide and the elastic is three quarters. And the elastic is a knit elastic as well, so it's very thin, but it is zigzag stitched in place as well. So it's not floating around in that casing, it is adhered. But again, just enough stretch to be comfortable. 
I've had some questions this week of where these pants should sit. And I think both of the helix pants and the pencil pants should the top of the waist, whether on the helix it's the top of the elastic, whether it's the pencil pants, it's the top of the casing, that should sit at your waist. Both of them tend to come down a little bit in the front and a little bit higher in the back. And I think that's a, a, a nice feature for both of them. So just because I may call this waistband on the pencil a yoke, um, it's not a true yoke. It's just a, a deep waistband, but it does extend below the waistline. Now, um, you know, we have good instructions both in a tutorial, the DIY pants fitting tutorial, our fashion fitting encyclopedia, and our fashion fitting workbook. They're kind of a companion set where lots of, of information about pants fittings from flat seat, full seat, wrinkles below the butt, uh, wrinkles in the front crotch, uh, lengthening and shortening, um, all kinds of things. So if you're interested in a, a, a larger review of pants fittings, check out our DIY pants fitting, which will be on sale this week, and these two books as well. The thing I like about this workbook is you take the information from this encyclopedia and you have templates in this book little half-scale templates that you can cut out and then following the instructions that are on the previous page and in this book my fingers aren't working very well today it's because it's cold then you can actually cut this up and do the various alterations to this little half-scale template and that's a really uh, it's a, a great way to become familiar with the technique before you actually do it on your pattern so I remember those. So uh, Aaron loves the Helix pants, has made them a bunch. But she used the Helix pants as her base beginning fabric, and she widened the leg. She happened to use the West End pants pattern for the leg width. But all you have to do really is to measure the circumference or the width of a leg that you want on your pattern if you would like to do this. The other thing that I thought was interesting that she did is she applied the elastic to the outside and did not turn it to the inside and I think that's a nice look as well. So just because our instructions say to tuck it inside, hidden, all that, no reason why you can't uh, leave it on the outside and there are some really beautiful colorful elastics out there in the world bright colors, beautiful colors, even some patterned elastics. So if you're interested in that, that, that uh, we don't happen to carry colors of elastics other than black and white, but you can find them on Etsy and other places like that and it's really fun. But I'm going to show you how this is done to widen the leg. Now if you happen to have the Helix pants pattern and the West End pants pattern. You can literally superimpose the two patterns, marry them together, and trace the leg width of the West Ends onto the helix. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. All you have to do is be sure and maintain the original fitting width through the hips of your pattern. So make a mark wherever your full hip is and you know you can't change the width of that. You also need to find the center of the leg. Now chances are our straight of grain line is in the center of the leg width, but if it's not, then you need to find the center of the leg. And I've made a mark right here to indicate that that's the center of that leg. Then I determined that I wanted to add however many inches. The width that Aaron used was about 13 inches across the front and the back. So the total circumference is about 26 inches. So you divide whatever the number is. If you want, uh, let's say, 13 inches, then half of 13 inches is 6 and a half inches. So you would go from the center, 6 and a half inches, both ways, and mark a point. And then you would take a hip curve and go from the original crotch point and gently curve that out to meet, to match these two points. And then starting at that full hip, 
I took a straight edge and came straight down to match that point. Now, I didn't run this by Aaron. Is that how you would have done it, Aaron? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, those are some things to do to your um, helix, pencil pants, helix top. Should we, do we have any questions about those things now, or do you want to go on? We do. Okay, um, I'm notorious for ending up with elastic that is too big. What formula do you use? Well, the formula for, the, the formula for these pants is a little bit different than normal elastic. Uh, the elastics on the helix and the pencils are cut at about one inch smaller than the circumference of the top of the pants. But you understand these pants are made in knits, and so the pants stretch and the elastic stretches, but that's the formula for these patterns. If you're talking about regular elastic pants like the Hudson's or the West Ends, then I take my waist minus at least four inches, and in fact, it's even more than that. But what I really do is I put the elastic around my waist until it's comfortable, and I mark the width that I want, add a couple of seam allowances so I can sew it together, and that's the width. And then I record that so I don't have to think about it again. But it's really more about comfort on you, so that's what I would do. How much stretch is needed in the fabric for the helix pants? We say 25% uh, stretch, which means if you take four inches of fabric and pinch it on the cross grain and pull it to five inches, that's 25%. That's minimum. Uh, you want as much stretch as you can get in a woven uh, and in um, uh, a knit as well. But if you're thinking about stretch wovens, which is what I have on, actually. You want, you want a fair amount of stretch. So 25% is the stretch that we're recommending. Do you sell the ultra soft elastic? We sell a one and a half inch black elastic that's soft. I wouldn't call it ultra. Um, could you make a V-neck on the helix, the, on the top? Absolutely, you can make a V-neck on the top. Uh, the uh, pattern does have the center front identified on the pattern with a couple of notches. So the, pattern, the neckline is not symmetrical here, and it's an interesting shape. Uh, I've drawn it fairly accurately, but for instance, here's the neck shape. So you would be sure and pay attention to the center back, or center front, and then you would uh, I, I would suggest that you actually put this pattern on you so that this center front is lined up and probably mark where you want the V and go from there because this would be a pretty hard to determine just by looking at the pattern. If your hips are larger than your bust, is there an adjustment for the hips? Yes, these, this is the width of the pattern so you would begin to blend out here and blend out here. Did you narrow? I'm assuming we're talking about the top. Yes, because she mentioned the bust. Okay. So, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you narrow the sleeves on the top? No, but you sure can, and I like that. And that would be done here by by just bring, you know figuring out the circumference that you want, and again reshaping those two seams that come into the bottom of the sleeve. Yeah, I like the sleeve tapered, but these are not on this one. But I roll up my sleeves. And so I think the proportions look pretty good. But if you're going to wear your sleeves down, I do like them tapered a little bit. I purchased some big loop heavy French terry. Is that suitable for the top? Absolutely. That would be fantastic. How do you raise the underarm on the helix so the upper arm doesn't bind when you raise your arms? Uh, that's this curve right here. You can scoop that more. Go to some new questions. What adjustments um, in the top of the pants are made to put the elastic on the outside? Uh, you would have to determine where you want the top of that elastic and determine the width of the elastic you're using, let's say one and a half inches. And then 
you're going to overlap that elastic to the top of the pants. I think it's three eighths of an inch in the pattern. Mm -hmm. So you would, uh, did, you know, take off um, one and a half, uh, one and an eighth, one inch or so of the top of the pants, so that the elastic fills out the rest of that. I didn't do that, but that's because I have a long torso. <laughs> yeah, or just leave it. <laughs> You got a long torso. That's what you do. Yeah. But I didn't do anything different about the construction. Like this, no. the technique with the zigzag and everything is in the same place, same. All that's the same. You're basically just not tucking it right to the wrong side. Yeah. So, um, which pants pattern would be better for someone who has wide calves? You know, I think there's not one that's better than the other. Um, I think they're about the same. Helix and pencils are pretty. Pretty similar. There are adjustments for making pants larger calves. There's a, the famous fitting book, uh, fitting and pattern alteration book that's a hardbound book that only costs like $200 or whatever, um, has uh, that adjustment in there. You don't see that adjustment very often in a book, but it is in that book. Uh, what size are you wearing in the top and the pants? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I made this top quite a while ago. I suspect that this top is a medium, and my pants are small. Would you recommend how could, would you recommend pockets in these pants? Um, you know, I love pockets in pants, and you sure could put side seam pockets in the helix or the pencil. I would consider what fabric I was going to use and the color of the fabric, the thickness of the fabric, and how tight the pants are, because you don't always want the see-through, show-through of pockets. But yeah, a side seam pocket is a great idea. I've also seen people put hip patch pockets on the Helix, and that's, that's nice, kind of a jean style. Can we see the back of the elastic on Erin's pants? How did she join the elastic ends? She sewed a seam, but you could overlap it. Or if you sew a seam, you could zigzag the seam down if you don't want that to stick up. But it's a simple seam. Mm -hmm. And that's just the same as in the pattern. Right. So I didn't, I didn't modify it. Yep. Um, again, with the V-neck, would you just go from center line to the front or do an adjustment to the back as well? I don't believe I would do an adjustment on the back. This, this back, uh, unless you would consider raising it, but I don't think so. I think you can leave it like it is. I've not done it. I'm just guessing. I think I see any other questions yet. Okay. Okay. Yep. Well, what we're featuring today are some really beautiful Ponte knits that are printed, and then we pull together some uh, coordinating knits that are really interesting, different than we've shown for a while, uh, for the helix, the pencil, or even the West End top, which is here. So if you have the West End pattern and you want to consider the top, uh, great, because this is made out of one of the knits that, the type of knit that we have on the wall. We've also used some Ponte knit to face this. Let me bring this forward so you can kind of see it. It's a great uh, way to trim this garment is to use some Ponte knit because you don't have to turn the edges. Pontes don't ravel, so it's an easy thing to, to cut and sew. But I love this. I love the West End top with its hood in a sweatery kind of fabric. Wear it, in the, if you're wearing it in the wintertime, wear it over a turtleneck, longer sleeves, or if you're in a warmer climate, just like this. All right, so let's look at our, our printed Pontes. So this one is really beautiful. It's a dark charcoal background with some uh, burnt sienna flowers, black, 
a little bit of uh, okra kind of color on it that has a slight, slight greenish cast or a musky cast, I guess. So one of the fabrics that we put it with is this fantastic cotton cable knit. Now we showed this a while back in off-white, but we also have it in this color. This would be really interesting in a helix top because you would cut it on the straight of grain, but when it lies on your body, it, this pattern would be on the diagonal. That would be really cool. So consider those as a, as a pair. This cable knit also looks really great. This is the classic Glen plaid. Now these are printed, so they're, you know, they're dark on the back. So they're printed, but this is a uh, very subtle, even plaid. So this would be easy to match, easy to work with, because you've got some, just a few dark lines that you could match, and you don't obviously have that many seams on the pants. And one of the things you're going to learn in the video for the February So Confident uh, tutorial or video class is how to match plaids if you don't know how to do that. So this is a knit that we've never had before and we have it on the wall here in two or three colors. It's um, the content is uh, bamboo, of rayon, and cotton. It is incredibly soft. It feels very much like this west end that we have on the dress form here, but it's very drapey, super soft, just sews like a dream, and you just wear it and feel so comfortable. So I think this would make a beautiful, beautiful helix top or west end top. This is another printed ponte that has some gorgeous teal blues and a little bit of burnt colors to it. Just sort of an abstract, I don't know, it almost looks like it's a sea. Um, somewhat floral in a way, but just a beautiful uh, print. Now we've had, we had this a couple weeks ago with the silver tones embossed or printed on the Ponte, but now we have the more bronze tones, bronze and, and browns. So the Pontes that we carry are polyester and uh, rayon and nylon. Some have polyester in them, but they don't pill. They're a beautiful quality and they're perfect for either the helix pants or the pencil pants. And they make great tops as well. So don't, don't forget that any of these printed pontes could be a helix top or a west end top as well, or a great jacket. I, I had wanted to make a jacket over the weekend and I just didn't get it done. Have you ever heard that before or said that before? Uh, <laughs> it just didn't happen. So at any rate, um, nice, nice combination of things though. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out on Erin's pants is that she did a little subtle contrast strip on the side seams. So this happens to be a little hound's tooth, but she just inserted this into the seams and I think that's a great detail. It's a nice slimming detail, it's a fun detail, and this little Glen plaid would work for that. Well, any of them would work for it, but I like the idea of the little Glen plaid. And then we have this plaid as well that would also make a great insertion. So there's no matching here if you buy this plaid. Uh, you just pick out the, the color way that you want. It could be all charcoal. It could have the golden tones through it, and that would be great for... This is, these are really fantastic together, actually. Would you mind telling him um, how that was done? Yeah, so it is inserted, it's not appliqued. So she would have reduced her pattern pieces by the width that she chose. So this width is about two inches. So she probably cut, I'm, I'm talking for you, mm -hmm. uh, but probably mm -hmm. cut this strip two, three and a quarter inches. So two inches plus a couple of seam allowances. So you need to take away an inch from the front and an inch from the back so that you're not adding width to the pants. Now you could applique on top, but to me that would be kind of stiff in this fabric. So the, this is actually sewn in with two seams. That was right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I made that up as I went along. All right. <laughs> so then we have this. Um, this is I know you'll not be able to see this on Facebook Live, but this is a gray background with black and deep navy. 
So this has some really pretty blue overtones or undertones or tones to it. And a very organic um, design. Goes great with this blue knit that also has a little bit of black woven through it. I think I'll go through and get some close-ups okay. of these because there's a lot uh, of details. Then we have this, the same sweater knit that I talked about here in this blue-gray. This is a printed ponte, you're never going to be able to see this, that has a very small little herringbone type print to it. Subtle. So it would look sort of solid on, but it definitely has a little bit of a pattern to it. Same way with this one. This has more blue, gray tones. This one is a, a different, more warmer gray tone, but it also has a small little design to it. And this is the same design as this one, basically. And then we have the same knit, this beautiful new knit. We just, we just found this knit uh, from a new source, so I'm really excited about it. And in this great purple. Now notice that, you know, I'm wearing purple and I'm wearing it with my greens. I did green contrast and my green tone pants, and I like that. For those of you who, I'm, I'm somebody who wears purples and reds, but I put them with the warmer colors as well. So, all right, so those are our fabrics. We had a few other questions okay. that came in. Um, they had a couple questions about your top. Can... Um, and they need a close-up of the stitching embellishments okay. on both yours and the other one. Okay. And if you could tell them about what fabrics uh, you use. Well, these are a cotton knit. Uh, both of them are the same cotton knit. All right, so there's the stitching on this one. Okay. And I guess you'll get the stitching on this one minus the chin. Here, I'll do my cowl. There we go angle down <laughs> okay and they're both you said they're both cotton knit, they're both cotton right? knit so the very same fabric just yeah. different colors mm -hmm. yeah one of the things about cotton knits um, you know they, they are a little bit sticky so I'm always kind of adjusting this whereas these are going to be drapey and they're going to skim the body a lot better when you hand sew on a knit uh, did you use any kind of stabilizer? No, I didn't use any kind of stabilizer on a knit. It sews really easily. Um, would the sweater knit you used to make the Eureka top as a sweater vest work for the West End jacket? Oh, yes. Absolutely. That, that tweed heather mm -hmm. uh, sweater knit would make a fantastic West End jacket. Yes, it'd make a great helix top. Um, what makes a knit a ponte? Well, uh, that ponte knit, that word ponte is um, a newish word. Uh, back in the dark ages when I was in college and we were studying textiles, that, that didn't even exist. So that is a manufacturer's term for a, an, um, an interlock as opposed to a jersey. So the construction is it's like a, it's like a double weave in a way. Uh, so it's the same, looks the same on the face as on the back, and it doesn't curl when you stretch it. So ponte is a, a new fashion word for interlock. The ponte I just ordered for the Memphis was too stiff and heavy. How can I tell when ordering? It would have been perfect for pants. Well, that's, that's tricky when you're ordering fabric online. I think if you have any hesitation at all, just call us and we'll uh, tell you about it, or we can certainly send a sample. So, about, so these pontes here? These they... pontes here, to me, are pant weight. Mm -hmm. Now, jackets, but uh, dresses, well, you know, as I say that, certain, certain dresses would be great, like a Hugo dress or something like that, a very kind of a shift style dress but for the Memphis there's too much volume and you're right I think it is too these are too stiff for a Memphis dress wouldn't you, mm -hmm. you say yeah because the Memphis can get heavy with yeah yeah you, it's, it's a, not the there's right. a lot of fabric in a Memphis dress mm -hmm. right right now a Fillmore dress that would be cool because it would accentuate the shape but that's totally mm -hmm. different or a Bristol dress or something yeah, yeah. A Bristol dress mm -hmm. would be perfect mm -hmm. yeah yeah make a Bristol dress you know turn a corner and use that fabric for a Bristol dress Mm -hmm. That'd be perfect. Um, so the 
So my pants were a ponte. Somebody asked whether that was a ponte yes. or not. So that was a printed ponte. Um, which fabric would you put with the blue floral ponte? Um, with this one? That, I, I would think the so. Blue, yeah, blue floral, floral ponte. That would be my, be my Which guess. fabric yes. would I put with the blue floral? Mm -hmm. Well, I like this with it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, this is nice with it, I think. Can you see that? It does look a little more gray, blue In, online, or yeah, on the camera yeah. here. If we're looking for a sweater knit to go with it, um, we might have to look in our inventory. We do have another like medium weight ponte that is a nice kind of burnt um, sienna color. Okay, too. yeah. It's um, a little deeper than this one, isn't mm -hmm, it? Yeah. Right. I do love this color with it. Mm -hmm. It really brings out the different yeah. colors in it. When you're hand stitching, do you, are you sticking the seam allowance down? I'm sewing through the top fabric and the seam allowance. So I've, I've opened the seam allowance, and so when I'm stitching on both sides of the well of the seam, I'm stitching through two layers. But, well, but then that's at the seams. On this one, obviously, you know, I was just stitching through one layer. Because this is just embellishment. Okay, so they are wondering about the cable knit at the bottom. Um, they said, they used the word beige. I'm thinking it's, it's more of a green, right? What do we call that? What, what, what color? I call, call it that? musk. Musk. Um, you know, it's a terrible word to use, but mud. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do it's we, a green brown. There we go. Okay. I wonder if that would help. It's not beige. Um, I don't the, call this beige at all. In, in the painting world, this would be, um, now that I'm into watercolor, this would be, I don't know what this would be. Um, it's like a burnt umber, kind of. Yeah, it, it ha to me, it, d it has kind of that green cast to it. It does um, definitely have a green cast. Uh, but boy, you wouldn't walk up and say she had on a green top. To me, this is just, this is a Kathy Davis color. It is. All over the place. <laughs> she would wear this with everything. It would be mm -hmm. beautiful with black, with gray, with navy. Um, it'd be pretty with lighter colors too, like camel. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even that kind of color with it is pretty. It's a good neutral, and it kind of takes on the life of yeah. other colors. I mean, I, we didn't know it. it even looked green until we put it with this, and we didn't know this right. looked green until we put this with this. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, you're right. They do bring out the colors of things. Um, your hand sewing looks so straight. Do you have any tips? <laughs> oh, <laughs> practice. <laughs> um, years and years ago... Uh, Kathy Davis and I went to Alabama Channon for a workshop, and we've been hand stitching on knits ever since. I've done thousands and thousands and thousands of straight stitches on knits, so I think practice. <laughs> but I don't even try to be perfect about it. Um, I think the part of the beauty of hand stitching is that it can be a little bit off. You know, talk to Nancy Schreiber; she's the queen of hand stitching on things and you know she says every stitch has a personality and it's yours. Um, what's the content for the blue fabric? Um, this fabric is polyester and spandex. This has a little bit of this has more weave to it than a lot of knits. It's got a lot of character to it. That's a gorgeous color, isn't it? Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, let's see. How, can you repeat um, how wide the cowl is on your top? Six inches tall. So then the piece was 13 and a quarter inches tall. 
Um, for the Memphis dress, some of the photos on your website, are, you use a lightweight ponte. Um, do you have any lightweight ponte? We, we have some lighter weight pontes. We no longer have that particular category of lightweight ponte that we've made some dresses out of. But we have lighter weight pontes. And we have heavier weight knits. So we kind of, we have great, I think we have some great options for the Memphis dress. Oh, a couple of colors um, that I think ring true for that um, cable knit. Um, mushroom. Oh, or, that's a great word for it. Or silt. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's what we, we called it. I guess Betsy called it silt. So good job, Betsy. <laughs> that's better than mud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing mud today. Yeah. <laughs> Although I saw that word related to something the other day and I thought, well, okay, I know what color it is. <laughs> exactly. Uh, would you please put the solid blue knit beside the printed floral ponte? It doesn't work. One's more royal, and mm -hmm. the other one has more of a kind of a teal, yeah, or a turquoise actually. This is cerulean blue. This is ultramarine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, can are, do we have any options on here for the Memphis dress? Uh, well, I think these knits. Would, don't you mm -hmm. think these would be gorgeous? I think uh, so. Memphis dresses and this one incredible. Has, mm -hmm. Um, it's light enough, but still has good, a good weight. Yeah, I the think these solid, I, I hesitate to call them sweater knits because they're not heavy, but they have the feeling and the softness of sweater. So these, what, all these solids to me would be great Memphis dresses. How long are the widened Helix pants? Um, well, they're the, width, the, the length that we recommend the West End pants, which is a little bit shorter than, I mean, I'm going to say their ankle length. Just above the ankle. Just above the mm -hmm. ankle, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, would it be helpful to add the ounce weight of the fabric on the website? It would, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, we don't always get that information. <laughs> we don't get that information from the manufacturers, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great. But, okay, let's talk about that a second. So, let's say we had an ounce weight on every fabric. How do you translate that, and what do you do with that information? If, if, you, if I tell you it's a seven ounce linen, I don't know what that means. I'd have to still feel it. So... Maybe you all know how to do that, but I don't really know how to do that. But honestly, we do get some ounce weights every once in a while on denims and linens, actually. But we never get them on knits and never. It's just not something that's offered up to us. The way we buy fabric, we don't buy fabric from the traditional like quilt manufacturers who are probably going to tell you a weight. We, that's just not the way we buy fabric. I'm sorry about that. Well, that's, I think that's also why we um, try to put suggestions on there for what patterns to use. Right. Um, to help with that. Yeah. Even if you're not interested in that pattern, it might give you a sense that, oh, that's a t-shirt weight thing. If, if, if we say make an ET, oh, okay, that's a t-shirt weight fabric. If we say make the getaway jeans and it's not denim, they say, oh, well, that's got some heft to it. Okay, I'm gonna do some close-ups. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. I'm gonna get even closer on this one. On this plaid, right. This plaid looks really good with this. Yeah, it's got some great colors you can mm -hmm. really pick up. I really like these two together. This whole combo right here. Mm -hmm. You could do pants, helix, jacket, or this could be your trim on the pants. 
We've had a couple people who want to make the Verona from last week. Oh, And so they've nice. been combining those two. Mm -hmm. Okay, now come over here. Yeah. This is the one that's tough to read because it's got the blue to it. Let me see if I can get closer, see if that's helpful. Okay. That is tricky. Mm hmm But I would wear this with navy. It'd be beautiful. And right. then I, I mm -hmm. actually like it with this, which I think that's pretty together. Let me get a close-up of the next one. Can you hold oh, that? Oh, yeah, this little weave. That is so hard. It's like a texture, just a good old mm -hmm. texture. You can tell, you know, there's the back side, black, and so that's blue and whatever, gray printed on it. And then here's the blue. Can you really see the black coming through right mm -hmm. now? Yeah. The black strie. Right. And then here's the gray version. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is a question about the, I believe, the cable knit. Okay. Um, do you think, um, what's the content on that? And would you, you said it was cotton, and would you wash it? This is cotton. And I don't know why you wouldn't be able to wash it. 90% uh, cotton, 10% spandex. I don't know why it wouldn't be washable. Everything's washable. What do we always say? Everything's washable. Mm -hmm. Just depends on what it you... Depends, dep everything, my <laughs> motto is everything's washable. <laughs> just depends on whether you like it or not. <laughs> and I think I saw one more question come through. So your, again, your top is a jersey, cotton jersey knit, correct? Correct. Cotton okay. jersey knit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you put that cable knit near the blueprint? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's, got a little pin here. We can. Yeah, some of them I had a pin. Yeah. I don't love it. No, it's the the print has more of a copper mm -hmm. to it. Okay, I think we again with your shirt. So we don't have the fabric that you no that you're wearing. Oh, this is long gone. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yeah. And that your pant fabric. Do do long we have gone. that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do have some stretch wovens. Mm -hmm. uh, but not this particular one. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not exactly the same purple, but it's close. That's true. Do you need to use length of fabric to insert trim on the pants? Oh, you know, most Ponte knits are um, stretchy both ways. I wouldn't think so. I think you could... Uh, I don't think you need a full length, but we do have a yard minimum order on our website, so you'd probably have a length. <laughs> okay, that's all I see. All right. Okay, so on sale, Helix Pattern Print, Pencil Pants Digital, all the fabrics, and the DIY Pants Fitting Tutorial. And that's it. So we'll see you next Tuesday. All new topic and have a great week.